Hello everyone. Uh, it's a nice, lovely, sunny afternoon in London. We are on Go Boat Cruising Out and Proud African LGBTI. Um, this afternoon, we're catching fun. We're still observing the social distance, as you can see. Uh, the government has uh, come with a new directive and we are observing it perfectly. We've got a guest on our YouTube channel. Yep. Welcome to this program. Thank you. Can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Well, hello viewers. Uh, good afternoon to you all. My name is Mebona Loza. I'm Ugandan and I'm lesbian with Out and Proud of how. That's very good. Yes. Being a lesbian and coming from Africa, Uganda, mm. would you like to share your story with our viewers? How was growing up in Uganda? How is it like? Let's hear your story. Well, uh, being a lesbian in Uganda is really, I, I can't even right up to now find the right words to really explain the situation, but it's filled with a lot of challenges and I think it's really a painful way to grow up. Now that I'm in the UK, I think I've come to reflect so much on how it was like, and I just feel like no human being should have to go through that, not under any circumstances. It's really, it's really a very bad experience. It is, mm. it is, yeah. I know you're a budding DJ. Yeah, I am, I am. Now, can you let us know, share that part with our viewers. How did they affect, being a lesbian, how did it affect your career as a DJ in Uganda? Well, um, basically being a DJ is kind of a passion because I really do love music, all kinds of music, but that's something I was actually not able to do back home because, well, I come from a very conservative family and it was more like your life is basically set up from the time you're born. Well, if you're a boy, you're meant to do this, 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 this. If you're a girl, you're meant to do this, 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 this. Like, so it was, well, there is no way you can come out of my family and tell them I'm a DJ or I'm interested in being a DJ or anything. Yeah, it's different. When you're a girl, you go to school, you come back home. Um, well, if you to graduate, you graduate, and then <laughs> sorry, um, if you graduate, you graduate. Um, you get a, you find a husband, you get a job, and that is if your husband lets you work at all. Mm. So it's kind of really a sad life if you look back. It is in Africa. You say it's double wahala, really <laughs> lesbian. Wahala. Being a lesbian, being a DJ. Yeah, you can never really, you can never really live life. You just, it's like you're living for someone else. It's always complicated. They're always telling you what to do, what you should not do, and you can't go against it because basically the whole community believes that's what it is. And at some point when you're growing up, you also believe that's the way life is supposed to be. Mm. Yeah. Well, here we are in the United Kingdom. Yeah. How open are you? How? Let our viewers hear that part. Well, coming to the UK, it wasn't really my um, plan to stay back. But after I stayed here and I uh, became a member of Opal and I met your friends and I met people and I became open about my sexuality, life has totally been different. It's really, that's why I was saying, like, if you look back, it's really painful to realize you've spent so many years of your life your youth being something else, like not living, being in a closet, not being able to express yourself, not being able to express your thoughts, your ideas, or even your feelings. It's really challenging, and coming to the UK has really been um, a transformation for me. Well, the transition is not as easy, but, well, at least you're living your life. Thank you very much, Mabel. Yeah. Here we are in the United Kingdom. How has life treated you? How open are you? Well, I can't even um, Im uh, imagine, I can't, I never ever in my entire life thought I'll ever be under such situations or in such an environment because I'm able to do things I never ever 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 dreamed I would ever be able to do. I'm able to hang out with my LGBTI friends, I can hold a girl's hand. That's, well, that's unbelievable. And well, um, 
it's not just like I need to come out of the house and hang out or party and so on and so forth. But um, after my experiences, I'm really so dependent on these people, my friends who some have become my um, family because they're it's it's kind of therapeutic for me and it helps me go through my days and maybe try to get over what I had to go through and I find that in out and proud we go for boat cruises we um, we have um, we have educational um, talks we talk we share we t we share our experiences and through uh, through other people's experiences you get to you get some kind of some sort of comfort and you manage to like you know to well, survive on that we um i'm able i'm able to do a lot of things i never thought i'd ever do in my entire life mm. and i would say like generally i'm able to live because i don't think before i was living my life but now i'm living my life yeah, yeah. so have you been part of all the um <coughs> social gatherings, the uh, yes, boat cruises, yes, yes. the beach. I have, the I beach have. Parties. Oh, recently we had a beach party, which was really, really, really nice. Yeah, it was so amazing. Uh, well, I got to meet most of my friends. Everyone South was end on sea. Yeah, at the sea, it was really lovely. It was a very nice time to get together. We had to talk. Yeah, it's long. Well, it's been so long because you can't really go to details over the phone sometimes. But it was really so nice. <coughs> And these are things that are and impossible. And these are things and um, impossible, like things you can never do back home. You can never be seen with. You can't. You can't. It's taboo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Never. Yeah. And it's really such a blessing. It's really such a blessing. It is. Yes. And being gay does not, being a gay person or lesbian does not take you to hellfire. Like you believe <laughs> no. Home. No. Well, well, people, people like to believe what they want to believe sometimes. That's it. That's it. But, and people have different perspectives about things. Uh, about even individuals mm -hmm. and so on but well some you can change but we need to always come out and proud and talk about these things they need to know we are part of society yeah we exist we've been there well long before yeah and yeah, they have right. to accept us they have to acknowledge this is who we are I agree with you 100% yes. ignorance yeah. is playing a major role in all of this yes it apart is, from it the, is. apart from the cultural beliefs yeah it's still a bit backward yeah, it is. All right, step down with the Fanta. Step. Just it's all right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mabel, uh, for sharing that part with us. The coronavirus pandemic um, has brought lots of challenges. Some of our guests on this uh, program have shared their experience. How did you cope? How did you survive? personally, uh, health-wise, and so on and so forth. Because before the lockdown, because basically we don't, I don't work. So most of the time, well, I think I have a lot of free time on my hands. So uh, we, I, I always used to look forward to going to GAY. Like, that's the only time I had mostly left the house, apart from when I had to go to college. But all that could not happen. Because you cannot go, or you could literally not go out, to your, out of your house to go get anything. and. Well, we missed out on a lot of things as well. We could not go for the pride. We could not go for our usual gatherings. We could not have our social. Well, you could not even meet your friends. And it's really challenging if um, it's given up, um, given my position, because I think I'm so dependent on the group and my friends and my people there and the activities that we do. And I th that's why it, um, my health was really affected when I couldn't get to do all these things. Yeah, because, well, I met my friends, we share, we talk, and so on and so forth. Well, we did, did meet, uh, we used to have uh, Zoom meetings and other interactions, but it's all different. It's different. Yeah, it's, re it's really taken a big toll on yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, I know at the beginning because it was really strange. And yeah, it was really it so strange. To... Yeah, and the uncertainties and even when we came out of the houses, even when we could go out shopping, like you're scared, you're scared of everyone around you. 
you're scared even of your own well even of your own people like oh when they've come back you're like oh did they catch it or do they have it are they mm. going to give it to me mm. it's really a bit it's really i don't know it's really been challenging well, thankfully challenging. O o opal was there but yeah thankfully we had out and proud um our leaders the administration they really helped us through a lot through the interactions the zoom meetings they were checking on us they were supporting us in different ways financially with food and thank um actually i i, I thank everyone who um supported us with our um um, fundraising, okay. yes, really, it really had, um, it, I thank you everyone, whoever really put in, I'm really grateful for that, because it has helped, really helped a lot of us, it has. Glad to hear that, Yeah. glad to hear that. I know um, you talked about uh, being at home with the um, Africans, with the African mentality, I was trying to tell you about that earlier. Mm. You know, I know, I, I feel it because uh, living with Africans sometimes, even in Europe, mm -hmm. you, they still have that mentality and yeah. you are unable to express yourself freely the way you really want to do. Yeah, you know, because uh, cause mostly, well, these things you're going through, they, well, they're just, well, they're with you because you're there. Yeah. And well, you're in a society where it's acceptable for them to be with you, but you can't share with them. You can't tell them what you're feeling. You can't tell them what you're going through. Mm. You can't, like you have no one to talk to about it. They wouldn't even let you. They wouldn't give you a chance. They wouldn't listen. So just imagine being locked up in a house with someone you can't even talk to about anything. Can't open up to them. You can't. That's good. Now, it's Mabel, really I'm so going to ask you this. Yeah. You must have message for our viewers back home. Yeah. Because we've got uh, Europe, UK, Americas. Mm. I want you to look at the camera mm. and pass your message. I hope I will not be asking too much if I ask you to say it in Uganda. Can you do that for our viewers? Um, sure. Please. I can do that. The camera is well, yours. Well, um, wait, can I do it in English? All yours. As <laughs> um, right, I think I'll just try to mix, mix it. it up. Yeah. Um, dear viewers, um, especially um, um, Ugandans, many of you have come to know us and the Muna Uganda. Irang, many. Many of the women who are coming are lesbian, they are Uganda, and they are coming from many families who are not very conservatives. So it's I know the women who are in the I know the challenges because I've been there, I've been through it, and I think I made it through by faith. But um, I want to tell you, like you don't have to go through that because we are all human beings. At a certain point, we need to be accepted and acknowledged that we are part of society and we have to be accepted. We are all humans. We feel the same way they feel. We have the same feelings. We, they, we, they just have a different perspective towards us, but it is not bad to be who you are. Well, I know many people uh, will feel less of, of who they are because of well, what's going on in the communities and what's being said and what the government does. But you don't have to feel bad about who you are. It's who you are. If you were not meant to be, you wouldn't have existed in the first place. But you're existing and God loves us all because we're all human. we all human. We all have different likes. I like Matoke, you like Posho. I like a girl, you like a boy. It's different. That's how it is. Yeah. So you just don't have to feel bad about who you are. You just have to first accept who you are and acknowledge your feelings and your view towards the world. Because we're all different. We're all created differently. No one can ever change that. Yeah, that's my message to you. Thank you very much, Mabel. Yeah. We are really glad having you on this program. Hopefully when next we call upon you, you mm. get our call. Okay then, all right. This is Art and Proud African LGBT YouTube channel. It's a day out. We are on go boats cruising on um, London canals. We've gone past Paddington, Edgware, 
we've gone pa past Maideville, wherever we are now, I don't know, but we are still on the canal. <laughs> uh, don't touch the dye. I've got other guests on the boat today. My captain today is my coach. He's doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. And my boss is behind the camera. Hopefully, we'll have opportunity of meeting. I say, what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the dial. Please comment, share, subscribe. and subscribe to Art and Proud African LGBTI YouTube channel. Thank you very much. It's still your homeboy, Larry Ayala. Keep watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.